Hi everybody, welcome to IndyCar on the 11th of September. Uh, I'm not um, going to make a big deal out of the fact that it is September the 11th and what the anniversary is today because obviously everybody knows what 9-11 uh, was all about. So I won't labour you with that, but it's, um, it's a day when actually not very much is happening at all here uh, in Scotland, or it seems that way anyway, that with um, Parliament having been suspended by Boris Johnson for the next five weeks. Very difficult to see uh, what actually is going on below the surface at the moment because political parties are in huddles somewhere um, preparing for their annual conference season which is coming up actually just um, towards the end of this five week period. So with the SNP conference coming uh, shortly in Aberdeen we might get some more information on what's actually going to happen. But um, my own feeling is thinking about things this morning that the um, the suspension of the Westminster Parliament means that, well, if Boris Johnson can suspend things at will like that, then surely the Scottish Government can suspend things as well that are within their own control. For example, um, let's say Boris Johnson continues with this uh, illegal action of trying to take the whole of the United Kingdom out of, <coughs> of Europe without any deal at all that if that were to happen, that uh, the Scottish Government could certainly um, start a, a campaign of what you might call it civil disobedience or non-cooperation with the UK. And non-cooperation can take many forms, but things like closing the border, you know, closing the roads for various reasons can be done. It's within the, uh, the powers of the uh, Scottish Parliament to shut down the road system. It's within the powers of the Scottish Parliament uh, to... I stop all kinds of industrial processes that um, might involve pollution, for example. They have powers over uh, the uh, environment. The Environmental Protection Agency falls under the Scottish remit as well. There are many other uh, services provided by the Scottish Government which could be suspended. Um, but I think the most important thing is to suspend all kinds of cooperation between the Scottish Government and the Westminster Government because if Boris Johnson is shutting us out um, of Westminster, then perhaps we should just shut Westminster out of Scotland as well. There are ways of doing this. There are many powers that the Scottish Government actually has in its uh, portfolio of devolved powers, uh, which it could use to disrupt the United Kingdom completely. Um, by shutting off the supply of things like fish, shutting off the, the method of getting stuff from one end of the country to the other, or for, uh, say, accepting English imports across our borders into Scotland. These, these can be closed down. There can be all manner of different checks put in place that are well within the Scottish Government's powers to make it difficult. The Spanish Government did this uh, not that long ago, actually, in Gibraltar where they used their powers um, at their own border with Gibraltar to slow things down to a trickle. So it was very, very difficult for any uh, British nationals to get from Spain into Gibraltar over the land bridge. So there are ways in which um, the Scottish Government could probably take direct action, non-aggressive non action, but action all the same, uh, to shut things down that they don't like. Another example might be um, to use the health and safety legislation that we have to shut down Hunterston Power Station before they started up because of a widespread worry that the cracks in the reactor core could set off uh, a runaway reactor meltdown or a fire of some kind or even an explosion. All of these things could be done and I think the Scottish Government really ought to look into doing that because uh, there's not very many ways that we can put pressure on London to take any action to give us the so-called Section 30 order. But this is one action that could be taken, would be to use all of the powers that the Scottish Parliament has, uh, basically to cause as much disruption to the United Kingdom as possible at a critical moment in its history when Boris Johnson really doesn't want to be looking over his shoulder to the north. So there are many ways in which we could put pressure on the Westminster government to give us the Section 30 order, or at very least uh, to pay some attention to us. I think if, um, <clears throat> if, as I said yesterday, if the five weeks that we have currently available to us are used wisely, uh, they should be used to set the date for a referendum so that it happens before Brexit. Uh, and if Boris Johnson tries to frustrate that by moving the Brexit date around, then we'll simply move 
the referendum date around two can play at that game if they can move the goalposts so can we we have goalposts that we can move as well and i think the the westminster government forgets that scotland has powers and it can exercise them and it should exercise them rather than meekly standing by and waiting uh, for the english government to make some sort of decision that will affect us which is what we always seem to be doing is hanging on waiting for the other shoe to drop in westminster the other thing that struck me uh, today uh, is that while everything is hanging fire like this, we ought to really be making our plans uh, straight away. Poll after poll in British-owned uh, newspapers north of the border have shown that the voting intentions of the Scots are somewhere between 60 and 80% in favour of voting in the S for the SNP in a snap general election. Now, if that's true... If, if that's really true, and say somewhere around about 70-75% of Scots will vote for the SNP in the next general election, that would see a complete white out, whitewash. That would see every uh, UK-held seat gone in Scotland. It would mean that the SNP would hold every single constituency north of the border. That would be a complete uh, takeover of Scotland by the SNP. That would mean that every single constituency in Scotland voted for independence. And I believe that if that were the case, imagine them for a moment that we got all 59 seats. I think you could declare independence with that because that shows that if that level of vote is there in every single constituency, even the marginal ones like the Borders and Shetland, but if it happens and there is no... Um, UK-based party left in a seat north of the border, I think you could suspend the union and say to Westminster, right, we have every constituency held against you now. The whole of Scotland is in the SNP's hands. The whole of Scotland has voted for the party that is fighting for independence. We are now suspending the union for our, from our side. Let's negotiate now before um, we go any further. It's, we're at a very strange point in our history. All kinds of things are possible. It would have been thought absolutely impossible 20 years ago. Even 10 years ago, this would have been thought impossible to have an SNP vote in the general election at somewhere around 70 to 75%. It's unheard of. It's never, never come before. But with that level of support, if it were across the board in every constituency, we'd see the end of unionist parties in Scotland. It would see them completely extinct north of the border. For the first time in 300 years, Scotland's, all of Scotland's constituencies would be held by Scottish independence-minded uh, MPs who are fighting for independence. Now that, to me, is a full mandate, not, not just a mandate for another vote. That is a vote. That is the people speaking and saying, we've had enough of this. We are voting for the SNP in every constituency. We don't want Brexit and we don't want to be ruled by Westminster. Remember that every constituency voted against Brexit. 62% of Scotland voted against Brexit. Every single constituency, all 59 of them. Now, if we can vote like that against Brexit, we can easily do the same for independence. And again, this is what we have to remind people that all of Scotland voted against Brexit. There is no reason why all of Scotland cannot vote for independence too. And I believe if the SNP misses this open goal, like I've said all along, if they, if they can't call a referendum in time, then at least make the, the mandate um, for the general, or not the mandate, but the, the manifesto pledge for this snap general election, full independence. If the SNP wins a majority, they will declare an end to the union make it really bold, really blunt, aggressive, take the fight to Johnson, and if he doesn't like it, well then, get his voters out to vote against it. This is a battle of wills between an English nationalist and Boris Johnson, who wants to take England away from the European Union, who wants to drag Scotland, kicking and screaming, out of its primary market, ruining the Scottish economy in the process, and throwing millions of people um, into unemployment, where, incidentally, there is almost no benefit now given by the UK. 
So there are many things uh, happening at the moment. I also think that we want to take a stronger stance against the expulsions of European nationals, especially in situations where uh, couples are split up because one partner is uh, European. Even if they've been here 20 years, they're being thrown out, forcing couples to either split up or both of them to migrate. That doubles the misery. Instead of just one person being thrown out of the country, two have to leave. This is going to depopulate much of the highlands because of the way this uh, callous system of chucking people out, this unpleasant, nasty environment that's been created by Theresa May. We need to fight against that as well. And I believe there is a way in which Scotland could create um, safe havens for people who are about to be thrown out by the UK border agency. Why do we have to cooperate with that? Remember that the UK border agency is like the police force for, for illegal immigration. They're not here to stop legal migrants from staying here. They're here to stop illegal migrants getting in. The Europeans who are already here came in here lawfully as Europeans with the right to stay. And for them to be thrown out and for their partners or families to have to go with them is a crime, really. And it's something that, that the Scottish Government must take a more uh, aggressive stance against and actually protect these people from this British state. Um, Scotland must have something that it can deploy in terms of human rights, where we can protect the rights of families to stay together and protect the rights of couples to remain together um, in Scotland for as long as they wish. All of these things have annoyed me for a while, but I'm beginning to think now is the time to become more aggressive, more taking the fight to the British government in Westminster and saying, we're not standing for this anymore. We are not going to wait around for you to wreck our country. We're taking this action now. Tough luck if you don't like it. We'll see you in the general election. We'll wipe out all of your parties and we'll declare the end to the union. It needs to be done and it needs to be much more aggressive than it's been so far. I believe now for the first time ever, actually since about 2012, for the first time I believe that Scotland could wipe out every single um, sitting Westminster MP who has a connection with a UK party, even even independents or former Tories. All of them could be swept away in this next snap election, but only if we fight very hard and convince people of the merits of leaving the union and remaining the status quo, remaining safe within the European Union until we decide how we want to relate to the rest of Europe. There's no harm in staying in the European Union for a time while we work out what the best trading arrangement is for us. Because when the dust settles after Brexit, we'll be surrounded by chaos in Ireland, in Wales, in England, in Northern Ireland, on, on the coast of Europe as well, there'll be a bit of chaos. When all that settles down, Scotland then needs to take a decision on how it trades with a, the rest of Europe, and with what's left of the United Kingdom, which will not be much. That's about it for today. Uh, I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye for now. Back to work for me.